Hello and welcome to the how-to video for results 2018. Today I will go over some of the basic and advanced features of results. I hope that this will help you with your analysis and give you greater insights into your reservoir model. To illustrate the various features, I'll go through a half and puff example. To begin, simply run your simulation dataset in the appropriate simulator. The simulator will generate files called SR3 files. SR3 files can be viewed in the new result software. The previous generation of output files, that is the IRF and MRF files, can also be viewed in the new result software. To view your results, open Launcher and drag the SR3 file onto the results icon in the Launcher window. Before I jump in, I will quickly go through the user interface. On the left is the project navigation tree. In this section, we have inputs, plots, reservoir, and finally the dashboard section. The ribbon on the top enhances the usability by making the features and tools easily accessible. In the project tree, under the input section, we can add other data sources such as other SR3 files, field history files, rescue files, and well log files. In addition, we can create user-defined paths such as well paths or custom linear paths that can be used later for profile plots. The formula section allows you to create custom time series and spatial properties using Python. The plot section is where you would create plots and through the reservoir node, you can view the reservoir in 3D or 2D cross sections. Finally, using the dashboard, we can create custom pages that contain multiple plots, reservoir views, text boxes, and even image files. Personally, I find this quite handy for presentations. Creating plots. Let's come back to our model. In the data sources tab in the input section, you can see that demo.sr3 has been opened. Clicking on the file name will bring up the details related to the file. Let's import a field history file. To do this, I will click on Add Files and select the FHF. Now the field history file has been imported in. You might have already noticed that Results has pre-populated some plots. These plots are created based on a template that comes pre-loaded with Results. We can save our own frequently used plots as templates and use them for future projects. The two pre-loaded templates look at group and well production plots. It preloads parameters such as oil, water, and liquid rates for groups and wells, and additionally water cut, gas oil ratios, and well BHPs for wells. There are three types of plots that we typically work with. Time series plots, profile or property versus distance plots, and time series versus time series plots. Time series plots. To create a simple time series plot, Click on Time Series under the Plot section in Tree View. Use the Curve Selection menu to select the desired plot. For our example, let's plot water rate and bottom hole pressure for well 1. To do this, I'll select wells from data type, select both the data sources, select Injector 1 from Data, and finally Water Rate SC from the Parameter menu. I'll repeat the same process for bottom hole pressure as well. Here you can see that the simulation results are plotted with a line, while the field history is plotted with markers. If you click on Plot Groups tab, you can see the same plot for all the wells together. Additionally, if I click on Water Rate SC from the tree view, you can see that the same plot has been automatically repeated for all the wells. Let's create another plot, this time plotting temperature in a particular grid block. To do this, click on time series under the plot section in tree view. This time in the curve selector section, select block properties. In the UBA section, enter the block address of the grid block that you would like to see. In our case, I'll plot temperature in block 44, 53, 1 and I'll select Temperature from the Parameter section menu and finally click on Add to New Plot.
Profile Plots Using profile plots, users can create property versus distance plots at a particular time. These can include block properties along a well path or a predefined linear path. Or it could be flow properties into a well or flexwell profile plots. For our example, let's look at oil rate into producer 1 on April 1st. To do so, click on profile in the plot section in tree view. In the curve selector, select well as path type and producer 1 as path. In the property section, select flow property as opposed to spatial property. Spatial property can be used to plot grid block properties along the well path. For our case, I will select oil rate SC and finally from the time step section, I'll select 1st of April 2018. This creates a plot of oil rate into the well versus distance from the first perforation. We can repeat the same plot over different wells or different dates. To repeat the plot, select repeat over from the plot properties ribbon on top. This will bring up a window that allows users to repeat over time steps or over paths. For our case, let's select time step. I would like to repeat this plot for April 1st, May 1st and June 1st. These plots allows us to see the progression of oil rate profile into the well over time. Time series versus time series plots. Finally, I'll also go through how to create time series versus time series plots. These can be quite useful in understanding the efficiency of the process being modeled and also for comparing different models or scenarios. Click on time series versus time series. The curve selector menu now has two sections, one for the X axis, another one for the Y axis. I'll plot cumulative oil produced versus cumulative water injected. To do so, select sectors under data type and oil produce cumulative sector for the x-axis and water injected cumulative sector for the y-axis and add to plot. Editing and modifying plots. Now that we've created plots, I'll show you how to modify the plots. Let's come back to our water rate, SC and well bottom hole pressure plots. To change the title of the plot, simply click on the title and edit as desired. In this case, we will add and bottom hole pressure to the title. To change the font size, with the title still selected, we can use the font drop down menu options to change the font, the font size and so on. To change the axis scaling, click on the desired axis. The right hand side of the plot properties ribbons shows the many options that are available to modify the axis, including changing from linear to log scale, swapping axis, changing the numeric spacing, and changing the range. Let's change the min and the max of the water rate axis from 0 to 300. Just as we did for the title, I can select the axis and change the font size and style. To change the properties, simply click on the desired curve. In this case, I'll select bottom hole pressure. I can then use the curve properties option under the plot properties ribbon to change the line color, the line size and such. The curve properties menu is also accessible by right clicking the plot or the legend. We can also hide or unhide the plot by selecting the hide option or by using the checkbox from the legend. Further, we can also rename the plots. Another interesting feature that has been added in the 2018 version is annotations. With this feature, the simulator writes well events such as trigger conditions being satisfied, group controls and constraint violations. These are shown on the plot with a star. Simply hover over the star to see further details. 3D views. Now let's move to 3D views. To view the model in 3D, 
simply click on the dataset name under the reservoir section. Currently pressure is being displayed. The property and the date can be selected in the view property section of the display ribbon. There are different modes that you can select while in 3D. Right click anywhere to switch between modes such as probe mode, rotate mode, pan mode and so on. By default the model opens in rotate mode. Also the auto probe option is active meaning that we can probe for property values for different grid blocks. To rotate the model hold down your left mouse button and rotate by moving the mouse. To pan the reservoir hold down the control or shift key and left mouse button and shift with the mouse. To zoom in and out, simply scroll using the mouse wheel. Additionally, in the grid section of the display ribbon, we can toggle between displaying reservoir property, grid lines, null blocks, and so on. To view the model in 2D planes, click on the desired aerial or 2D view from the reservoir section. I will select aerial view. Once again, to select the property, use the drop down menu in the display ribbon or right click and select the property from the drop down menu. For our example, since this is a CSS example, let's look at temperature. Currently, this is showing the first K layer. We can change the K layer using the display ribbon or using the up and down buttons on the keyboard. To change the time for which the property is being displayed, use the display ribbon option or use the side arrows on your keyboard. We can also animate the reservoir simulation results by using animation keys on the lower right hand corner. Now let's look at some more analysis functionalities. At the bottom of the view, Different analysis tools are available. Let's start with Property Filter. As the name suggests, the Property Filter allows us to filter grid blocks based on a property. For example, if we only want to see grid blocks in a certain temperature range, click on Property Filter and make sure temperature is selected in the drop down menu. Using the slider, we can change the range of the temperature filter. If the filter is enabled, it will be immediately applied to the reservoir view. If we define a second property filter, the reservoir view will show the intersection of the two filters. Let's add oil saturation also. To add another filter on top of the temperature filter, click on add filter and select property filter. This time selecting oil saturation. To deactivate the filter, uncheck the property filter option. Slab filters are also available using custom filters, slab filters I, J, K and well slab filter. We can also add isosurfaces and flow vectors. Isosurfaces are surfaces having a specific property value. I am going to add isosurfaces to this model displaying temperature. I'll click on add a filter and select isosurfaces. From the drop down menu select temperature. Select the time that you may want for the isosurface and the value. We can turn off the reservoir property in the property group on the display ribbon to make the isosurface more visible. You can use the transparency setting to better expose the isosurface. Transparency is accessible from the display ribbon or the slider on the lower right hand corner. Another handy feature that has been added to results is the locate cell option. Locate a cell allows the user to toggle between different views while focusing on a particular grid block. Let's select a grid block in the 3D view by clicking on the grid block. Right click and select the desired view from the locate cell options. This will now show me the grid block in the view that I've selected. Exporting results. 
Now I'll go through the various options available for exporting results. Results has a copy to clipboard option. To copy any plot or view, simply click on the view and click on copy to clipboard option from the home ribbon. You can simply use the Ctrl C keyboard shortcut also. You may also save the plot or view as an image file using the export image option in the home ribbon. Exporting to Excel There are different options when exporting to Excel. We can right click on any plot and export only that plot to Excel. Or we can export the well summary to Excel. Both these options are available through the home ribbon. Well summary can be exported as a single table or multiple tables. The data and the frequency of the data exported is customizable through this window. Exporting movies. We can also export the animation of the view using the export movie option in the home ribbon. This option allows the model to be rotated also as the time animation progresses. And finally, Results also exports the results in RescueML format for easy data transfer with other softwares. Dashboards Through the Dashboards node, you can create pages containing multiple plots, reservoir views, text boxes and images. By organizing plots and views on a grid, we effectively increase the dimensionality of the analysis. As well, we will be able to compare plots and views and discern subtle differences that we might not be able to detect just by switching between them. Creating Dashboards You can create a dashboard by clicking on the Dashboard node and then clicking on the Create Dashboard button. A new dashboard will be added to the dashboard tree. To add a plot or a view onto a dashboard, simply drag the plot or view that you want onto the dashboard. A new dashboard can also be created by dragging any plot from the Plots view to the Dashboard node. For example, I am going to add oil rate plot, well bottom hole pressure plot, and finally I will also add the 2D view. To resize the plot, click on the plot to bring up the handles. Then holding down the left mouse button, simply drag with the mouse to resize or move the plot. I'll change the oil rate plot and the well bottom hole pressure plot. I also want to resize my 2D view to create some space at the bottom of the dashboard to add a text box. Now I'm going to add a text box. I can type any comment that I might have within the text box. In addition to the text boxes, we can also add images to the dashboard as well. To do this, go to the Dashboards ribbon and click on Image from the Add Visualization section. Results allows most commonly used file formats. I also want to add a Well List. Well Lists allows us to select the well from the drop-down menu and the plots will be changed accordingly. Finally, I am also going to add statistics from the reservoir view. To add statistics, go to the dashboard ribbon and select statistics from the add visualization section. Next, I have to select the view to see the statistics for that parameter. Now it's showing me statistics for temperature. To help with analysis, the Align Axis option is quite useful. This aligns the plots vertically for better visualization. Also, if you right-click a time step in a plot that is linked to a dashboard and then select Jump to a time step, the selected time step will be highlighted in that plot and all the plots that are linked to the dashboard.
Note that as we move through time, even the 2D views are changing accordingly. To delete any plot, select the plot from the dashboard, go to the dashboard ribbon and click on Delete Selected. Additionally, dashboards can be exported as images or movies. Dashboards can also be exported as templates. Let's export this dashboard as a template. To import a template, I have another instance of results open with the same demo.sr3 file. To add a template, I'll click on Add Templates under the Data Sources and select the Templates option. Now the templates that I have saved earlier are available to me and I do not have to recreate the same plots again. Also another quick and handy feature is the Replace option. Results allows us to swap out the SR3 files without affecting the plots and views. To do this, let's come back to the Data Sources section. Right-click on the file that you would like to swap out and select Replace. Now select the file. You can see that the file has been swapped out. That covers a quick overview of the features of Results. Thank you for watching.